That's the difference. No, I think it's human nature where we would like somebody else to do that job of taking away seven selfishness and war and violence and all the inequality and injustice in the world. We want God to come down and God to do it so that we would be erased from that responsibility. You know, let somebody else do it. It's not my job, not my problem. But Emmanuel says that God comes to us and transforms us so that we will be that for others in the world. If all of those things that I mentioned have not disappeared, it's not God's fault. The responsibility lies with us. And that's what the Christmas event is. It's not a day, but it is a process where disciples take on the role of the Lord Jesus. We become Emmanuel, God with us, God through us into the world. Now we take that idea, and then I just read this week that this holiday season, over half of the people find this to be a, a sad time, a disappointing time. And it's not just the disappointment in the presence. It's not just the disappointment that perhaps we have to be together with people that we necessarily don't want to be with, like our families. But it's also a time when we become totally aware, it's like it becomes raw, that our dreams have not all been fulfilled. And I suspect that speaks to all of us. The dreams we have when we were growing up, it's not just like the child who dreams of a certain gift and doesn't get it. But I'm talking about those deeper problems or the deeper disappointments in life where things we thought were going to happen to us didn't happen. Maybe there's problems in our marriage or our family or our jobs or our health or all of those bigger issues of life that have led to a, 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 a disappointment. And then we wonder why God did it to us. I don't know if it's just this year or not, but I can tell you in the last month, how many people have talked to me about why God did certain things to them? And that's a real test. You can take it yourself. If you believe that God sends you the sufferings, the tragedies, the disappointments in life, that God is somehow up there, out there, sending us bad stuff to test us, if you believe that, then you haven't even begun yet to understand what Christmas is. Because God is not just up there out there. Emmanuel says God is with us. God is within us. Because God doesn't send us our problems. God doesn't control everything. Because we have free will. But Emmanuel says that God is with us. That somehow God is not only present in the world through us, but God becomes present in the disappointments. And they become the, the, the revelation, the presence of God in the world today. That's Emmanuel. That's how God works in and through us as our Savior. With the help of Anne Hepp, our Director of Child Formation, I'd like to read a, a tale for you tonight, which I think exemplifies this. It's called The Tale of the Three Trees, a traditional folk tale. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood, and they dreamed of what they wanted to be when they grew up. The first little tree looked up at the stars twinkling like diamonds above him. He said, I want to hold treasure. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the whole world. The second tree looked up at the, looked down at the small stream trickling on its way into the ocean. He said, I want to be a strong sailing ship. I want to travel on the seas and mighty waters, and I want to carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the battle, where in the low he saw busy men and busy women all working in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountain top at all, they said. I want to grow so tall and when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to me. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Years passed. The rains came. 
The sun shone, and the little trees all grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is beautiful. It's perfect for me. And with a swoop of his shining axe, the first tree fell. But the first tree said, Now I will be made into a beautiful chest. I will hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It's perfect for me. And with a swoop of his shining axe, the second now I shall sail mighty waters on the second tree. I will be a strong ship fit for kings. The third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. She stood straight and tall and pointed greatly to the heavens. But the woodcutter, woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he said. And with a swoop of the shiny axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to the carpenter shop. But the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his wood worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry and dirty farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to the shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Instead, the one strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat, too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river. He was taken to a little lake. Every day he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams, but left her laid in the lumber yard. <coughs> what happened? The one saw the tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights trees nearly forgot their dreams. And one night, a golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make her a cradle, a cradle for him, her husband whispered. But the mother squeezed her his hand and smiled at the starlight shone on the smooth, sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. Suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. I have loved them. One evening a fire traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed on. Soon a thundering, crashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and rain. But the tired man awoke. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace. And the storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew that he was carrying the king of heaven.
time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. That's yes. 